five five solving polynomial equations and advanced factoring. That's really what gets people. So that's how we're gonna solve polynomial functions by advanced factoring. Anyway, our first advanced factoring is the sum of cubes. So we already have the difference of cubes, which is the squares, I should say, where you get a minus b a plus b. Right, when the first term and second when both terms are squared, you could factor it out like this. Well, same idea. If you only have two terms and they're both cubed, you actually can factor both plus and minus. And it goes into this case right here. A plus a cubed plus b cubed is a plus b times a squared minus a b plus b squared. How do you remember this? Well, it's always the same. It's a different one, and it's positive or plus. Now, honestly, I'm going to give you the formulas, but that's a good way to memorize memorize each one. So again, it only works when they're uh, binomial terms. So just like over here, if it's a binomial term, you can do this. So now that adds to our little, like, polynomials. Right? Any First step, always. Step one is always factor out the GCF, see if that's anything common. And then it's all about what type, of, what type of polynomial do you have. Do you have two terms? Then it's either a difference of squares or it's a difference of cubes. Remember, if it's not one of these, then it might be a prime polynomial. And right? when you can't factor it, it's prime. If it's three things, you can do it the fancy way, or you can do a shortcut way, if it, if it has no number in front. And if it's four more, all we do is by grouping. So anytime it's more than four, grouping is the way we're going to go. Okay, so let's do a couple by grouping first, actually. Look at this. There's six things here. We're still going to group the same way. If you look at the first ones here, the first three, it's cut in half. They all have an a in common. And you have for 3x plus 2y minus z. And look at the next two. They all have a b in common. So, oops, sorry. b, 3x plus 2y minus z. And now, hey, these match. 3x plus 2y minus z. And look what's left over, a plus b. So that's how you factor it by grouping. That's one way to factor by grouping, actually. There's another way you can do it, too. You actually do it, you could do it, um, you could pair them up. If you rearrange it, you could pair them up. But yeah, let's like do it like this, so you can see it. I'm gonna put everything with the three together, everything with the two together, and everything without the negative one together. In this case, you could, group, you could factor out three x, you get a plus b, and over here you can factor out a 2b, 2y and get a plus b. And over here you can factor out a negative z and get a plus b. And if you notice, these all match. So you get a plus b and left over 3x plus 2y minus z. So two ways to do it. I think most people like to cut it in half. Let's do it that way, but it's more, more than one way to skin a cat. So anyway, next one. Same thing here. So now remember, you always want to make sure if you can do, you might have to rearrange it. So like, let's look at all the x's. Oh, the first three all have an x, so let's just do it that way then. x, and you get 2k plus 4m all. That costs a factor out of 2. So 2xk plus 2m minus z, n, n, minus n. I can do math. Over here, they all have a 3y in common. So remember, always bring on the middle sign. Divide that by negative 3, you're going to just get k. Divide that by negative 3, you're going to get 2m. Divide that by negative 3, you get a negative n. It's supposed to be an n. These match, you know they look ugly, and you get k plus 2m minus n times 2x minus 3y. So we get that. So that's how you factor by grouping, right? So again, you can break it in half, or you can do pairwise, either way you want to do it. Now let's look into, into factoring the difference of cubes. Let me put the formula right here so we could use it again. Now the rules are a cubed minus b cubed is same different pl plus. And if it's a cubed plus b cubed, it's same different plus. So that's the formula, I will give it to you. Now you just gotta know how to use it. So remember, this only works when they're both cubes. So let's do this one first. And actually, don't forget the first rule of this one, of factoring, right? 
factor out of GCF, factor out anything they have in common. In this case, it makes your life so much easier. In this case, they all have a 2. So I'm factor out a 2. So I get 8G plus H cubed. Now if you look at it, 8's a cubed, and G's a cubed, and H is a cubed. Right? So I'm going to rewrite it real quick so you can see it. Like, Because again, this only factors if they're both cubed. So this is like saying 2G cubed, and it's like saying H cubed. And there's a 2 on the outside. Whatever, I like that because all we gotta do is once you understand what the A and B are, that's what this is. This is A and this is B. All you do is plug it into the formula. In this case, plug it into this formula. So it's gonna be 2G plus H. Now, A squared, I gotta square this. So that's remember, if you square 2G, you square both of them. So it's actually 4G squared, right? That 2 goes to both. Okay. So 4G squared minus a times b, so I'm going to multiply these, so 2gh plus h squared. And on the outside, don't forget the 2. So that's how you factor that one using the difference of cubed. Now let's go back to number 3. If you look at 3, they have nothing in common. 2 is not a cube and 5 is not a cube, so I can't do anything. This is prime. And the next one, they do have stuff in common. They both have a P and a Q, a 12 and a Q, so you factor it out first. Put W cubed minus Q3. And now look at, they're both obviously primes. This would be my A, this would be my B. And just following the formula, it's same, oops, sorry, same opposites and then positive. That's supposed to be W Q. And there's a 12Q on the outside. So it looks like this. Like that. It's another factor by grouping. We're going to skip that one because we did a lot of these. Um, it's a lot of factoring ones. <laughs> I can do all of these. This would have an x squared in common. We'll factor out. This would be a6 minus b6. And that actually is a cube. This is the same thing as saying a squared cubed minus b squared cubed. All right, so that's a tough one because it's like, it is a cube, but it's not the normal cube. Just my a, my b, so I'd get same. And then you got to square it, so it'll be a to the fourth. Opposite, so a squared, b squared. And positive, and it's that one squared. And don't forget the x squared in front. So that's a funky one. That's another. We'll let's go about the factor group. Those are easier ones. Let's do one more of the of these. So this one they have anything in common, but these are cubes. It's the same thing as saying two c cubed, and that's five d cubed, right? So it's all about figuring out if they are cubes, and then you can write it like this, and then this is your a, this is your b. And the former is this, and this right? Same squared different positive. So it would be 2c minus 5d. Then you got to square it. 2c squared is 4c squared plus multiply them together. So 10cd plus 5d squared which is 25d squared. And that's how you factor. But the diff that's how you do a difference of cubes, right? Make sure they're both cubed. That's the hardest part. Once you figure out their cubes, then you just follow the formula. Okay, so next part is actually a very important concept and it's called quadratic form. So the idea is this. We know how to factor if I gave something like x squared plus 5x plus 4. You'd be like, oh, it's x plus 4, x plus 4, x plus 1. The idea between the quadratic form, it, it works the same no matter what the powers are, as long as the middle one is half of the first power. In this case, as long as the middle power is half of the first power, then you can factor it the same way as always. So always the middle one and whatever these things are. That's quadratic form. As long as this one is half of that one, you're good. So if I gave you stuff like x to the 10 plus 5x to the 5th plus 4, this is half of that. So if I make it x5, it'll work because x to the 5th times x to the 5th is x to the 10. It all kind of follows. So that's quadratic form. If the middle term is half the first degree, the latent degree, then you could factor it like normal. That's quadratic formulas.
So this, so this first part just wants to know, which are these in quadratic form yes or no? Well, look at this one. That is half of that, so yes. That's quadratic form. I could I can in theory factor this. It'll be like x cubed and x cubed. This one? No, it's not. This is not half of that, so no. Right? There's no way I can multiply two things, the same thing twice to get that. So that's quadratic form. Now let's use it to solve some problems. Again, notice how this is half of that. So I can just factor like normal. It's going to be x squared, x squared. Now I just got to figure out what two things multiply to get 48 by adding a negative 19. And that is not 4 and 12. It's 18 and 3. 16 and 3. 16 and 3, yeah. So 16 and 3. 6 times 3 is 48. Add me at 19. So there you go. So you have this. So you factor like normal. Now you can split it like we always do. x squared minus 16 equals 0 x squared minus 3 equals 0. Remember, if you just have one, if you only have one term, one variable, just solve for it. x squared could factor, but easiest to solve for it. Square root it. And remember, when you square root it, you should get plus and minus 4. And over here, x squared equals 3. Square root it. x equals plus and minus rad 3. One thing I want to point out, notice we have four answers, and they start off with x to the fourth. That's called the fundamental theorem of algebra. That should always be the case. Whatever the power, highest power is, that's how many solutions you should have. So I should have four solutions. Let's move on to the next one. Uh, so this one. This is why I bring this up. So if you know, first notice, you, know, you could graph it, right? I mean, so you could solve for it. There's only one variable, solve for it. And then you cube root it. X equals 4, and you're like, done. Except for one thing. There's only one answer here. That I should have three answers. So what happens here? In this case, since it's an odd function, you have to factor it. I gotta find my I gotta find my three solutions. I only got two solutions. That's not gonna cut it. So we gotta factor it. Luckily for us, it's a difference of cubes. This is x cubed minus four cubed. So I could factor it as in same different you multiply them, A and B plus b squared, so 16. Just using the formula. I've done a lot of the minus ones. Ah, uh, it should be an a and b. a plus b to a minus b. a cubed minus b cubed is a minus b a squared plus a b plus b squared. Again, I will give you the formula every single time. Now we got to solve this. Well, one of them is easy. x equals 4, the one we found. All good. This one right here, not so easy. Cause I got, I got news for you. This one's never factorable. It's never gonna work. So we have to solve it either using right the only two ways that always work, and that's either compute the square or quadratic formula. So you can compute the square on this or use the quadratic formula. Both of them are actually equally not bad on this one. I'm gonna do quadratic formula because I think it's one that most people prefer. So it'll be a b c and x equals negative b plus or minus b squared minus four a c all over 2 times a. So 16 minus uh, that 64. So I get negative 4 plus or minus negative 48 all over 2. So I'm going to get negative 4 plus or minus. And there's a, remember, there's a negative, so if you pull it out, I'm going to get an i. Rad 48 over 2. I can write down 48. What is that? 12 times 4. And that is. 4 times 3, so a pair of 4s. So negative 4 plus or minus 4i rad 3 all over 2, and I can reduce that a little bit, they all divide by 2. Oof. Negative 2 plus or minus 2i rad 3. Right, those are my three answers. 1, 2, 3. Right, so it gets solving the cube ones are actually the worst. Because you're like, oh, I gotta factor it, and that's not gonna factor pretty. Same would happen with the next one. Right, if I was gonna factor this, Again, I'm not going to solve it because I know I should have to have three answers. So I'm going to factor this. This is 3 cubed. So it's going to be x plus 3. x, this is the formula. x squared, same, opposite, minus 3x. You just multiply them. Plus 9. Again, if you're not sure, I just got to I just use the formula. That's all I did. You'll have it. Just got to use it. And then when you solve this, this part is solved easily. x plus 3 equals 0. So x equals negative 3. This part... Either quadratic form or complete the square. And this one right here would be quadratic formula because the complete square is ugly on this one. So you do this because it's not even. 
and you get 3 squared minus 4 times 1 times 9 all over through 2a, so 2 times 1, my mistake. You get 3 plus or minus, what is that, 9 minus 36? 9 minus 36 is what, 27? So 3 plus or minus cube root of 27, negative 27. And that's the same thing as saying 3 times 9. So that's going to be 3 rad 3. So you get that, right? Those are my three answers. 1, 2, 3. Yeah, not pretty. Those are not pretty, but that's how you do them. Let's get to some of the easier ones. I'll skip down because of, cause of space. Let's go to this one. Now, again, these are, when you see this like this, all you care about is to see if the middle one's half of the first one. You're like, oh, yes, it is. I can back to like normal, right? It's just a, di it's, it's in that form. So you just back to like normal. So it's always the middle one here, x squared, x squared. Find two things and multiply to get 8, add to get 6. So we negative 4 and 2. So much easier than the last ones. Split it. x squared minus 2 equals 0. x squared equals 2. Square root it x equals plus and minus rad 2, x squared minus 4 equals 0, x squared equals 4, x equals plus and minus 2. Again, notice four answers, 1, 2, 3, 4, x to the fourth. That's where I got that way. Now this, this one, same thing. I can do it real quick, right? Half of that to y squared, y squared. Two things I multiply get 17, bad to get 18. What is that? Uh, 12 and 6. Minus 12 minus 6 equals 0. Split it. y squared minus 12 equals 0. x squared equals 12. Square root it. Plus and minus rad 12. You got to break that down though. 3 and 4. Square root of 4 is 2. So 2 plus, ah, plus or minus 2 rad 3. y squared minus 6 equals 0. y squared equals 6. Square root it. y equals plus and minus rad 6. Can't break that down. So that's how you solve it, right? So that's, what, that's solving things in quadratic form, right? Not that bad, just factor like normal. Uh, it's kind of ugly when it's only cubes because you have to factor it, and then that side does not factor nicely, so you use quadratic formula. Doable, but just kind of ugly. Okay, let's move on to the next thing. Let's do an application problem or two. Let's see this in boardwalk. Let's set this one up, but we won't solve all the way. So the pond is 30 feet wide and 40 feet long. So like 30 feet wide, 40 feet long. The combined area of the pond and the boardwalk is 20 square, 2,000 square feet. So remember, the area would be this whole thing. The way we set that up, this would be 30 plus the width of the pond twice. It's 30 plus 2x. The same thing with this one right here. This would be 40 plus the width of the pond twice. So 40 plus 2x. So we know the whole thing is 2,000. So it would be 40 plus 2x times 30 plus 2x equals 2,000. They would want me to set this equal to, multiply it out and set equal to their own factor. I personally would just use my calculator, y1, y2, because that's going to be a lot of work for no reason. Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm going to show you guys how to use your calculator to solve something like that, right? Because they the way they want you to do it, it's going to take forever. So let's go to y equals, and let's type in this one for, for y1. So I'm going to go 40 plus 2x times 30 plus 2x. That's my y1. And then over here, I'm going to put 2,000 as my y2. And now I'm just going to look for the intersection. Now here's the thing you got to worry about, because this is 2,000. And you can see right now, after this like stops thinking, I don't see a thing, right? My window's off. I got to go all the way to 2,000, because I know for sure my graph, there's that graph, this one, who knows what that looks like. It's by parabola, looking, it looks like this some. But this one, I know it's all the way up here at 2,000. So I gotta make sure my window can see that. So I'm gonna go to my window. I'm gonna go, my, my X max probably put a little bit, something a little bit bigger than 2,000, right? 2,500. And then graph. So now I could, oh, there's that part of the graph. And that's where 2,000 is. Now I can't see the whole graph. I'm thinking if I, maybe if I went to negative 10, so if I can see better the whole graph. Who no. Anyway, so what's going on is this. You could kind of see this part right here. And right now I could find this one. I can't find this one, but honestly it doesn't matter. You know why? That's negative. 
right? You can't have a negative width. So the only one I really care about is this one anyway. So that's all I got to find. And remember on your calculator, where you find that, just find the intersection. Second calculator, find the intersection number five. Just get a little closer to it. Hit first curve. Yeah, it counts. Second curve is down. Yeah. Guess, please. And you get five. That works out nicely. So the width's going to be five. Again, the way they would want you to do it was multiply this all out, set equal to zero, and then factor it. And it's going to get ugly. But that's what you can do in your calculator. Don't forget to just fix the window. That's the key there. And if you want to fix your, put your window back, just put zoom standard number six. Now you're back to negative 1010. 10. Anyway, that's the lesson.